Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Got a little coffee. Got a little coffee in my... Are you serious? Jesus saves coffee cups. There was an article written about me yesterday out of some uh, newspaper out of Los Angeles, California, making fun of my are you serious? Jesus saves coffee cups. It's kind of funny how they do that. They always want to make fun of the name of Jesus. Make fun of the preacher. It's okay. I want to thank all my subscribers. I want to thank all of my followers. I want to thank all of my friends. I want to thank all of my brothers and sisters in Christ and friends and, and, and folks that are interested in the end time. The love you guys poured out to me at the end of the day. I was beaten down. Look, I'm used to criticism. I get a lot of it. I've had it my whole life here and there. Us preachers, we get used to that. But I never, I've just never had a day where I had received 1,137 hate comments. I didn't read them all, couldn't. I mean, no. Want me to commit suicide. You know, all kinds of, oh, just horrible. Cursing God, blaspheming Jesus, blaspheming the Holy Ghost, blaspheming the preacher. But here's the thing. I asked for some prayer. People sent me emails. Folks were praying for me. Comments come flying in on that last video I did at the end of the day. And I appreciate that. I just needed it because I was I was just off I was just stunned. I'm all right now. As usually I bounce back and I'm back and I want to read to you the word of the Lord. Can we go to Matthew chapter 6 for a moment? Just for a moment. I want to read this right here. I want to share with you something. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. This is Jesus teaching his disciples to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a powerful passage. Scripture. Are you serious? This is a double dog dare the devil to deal with that. <laughs> because there's power in the word. There's power in prayer. There's The Bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. I just have so much joy right now. Here's why. I just glanced down on the video that was promoted in all of the mass media yesterday. And as of this morning, had 53,000 views. I don't know what it's got right now because we had a we had a lightning storm hit here. And so it knocked the, the internet out for the whole day. I'm doing this video in the morning. It won't air till the later this evening. So praise God, it was powerful. But here's the thing about it. It's so good that... I don't know how many folks actually seen the articles and read them and they in all of them it's quoting the word of God I, I told my wife I said Heidi I said I never would have dreamed in all of the years I've been preaching the gospel that the words of the Bible that I was speaking would be published throughout the world but it happened and I praise the Lord for that as that is fulfillment of another prophecy when this gospel is preached into all the world then shall the end come now I'm not saying that I have to preach it there's other ministers of God that are everywhere sharing the word I mean I got friends missionary friends in India missionary friends in Guatemala friends that are preaching in Africa folks that are all over the world have talked to me by YouTube and internet we have a powerful force we're building. We're making a difference every day bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I read to you Matthew 24? Because I had one comment said I don't understand. I don't never read Matthew 24. So I thought, well, huh, about 1,000 times in the last six months. But let's do it again, okay? Here's what the Bible says in Matthew 24. Listen closely to the signs of the second coming of the Lord. Verse 3. And as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed 
that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. But all these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, shall hate one another. Oh, Lord, help us. And many false prophets shall rise, and they shall deceive many. Folks, they're doing it right now. They're, they're trying to blend Christianity and Islam and call it Chrislam, an interfaithism to bring peace. Folks, when they cry peace and safety, get ready, it'll be sudden destruction. You can't mix Jesus and Muhammad. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism by one spirit. We're all baptized into one body. Can somebody help me preach? And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that in, shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I've heard my dad preach that verse a thousand times. He, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You've got to push through this thing, folks. Don't be backsliding on God. You've got to push forward. You've got to press on to the prize, to the mark of the high calling of God. You need to hang in there in the name of Jesus. And this gospel, what gospel? Not the gospel of Chrislam. Not some weak, need, yellow belly Come on, we don't need puppets in the pulpit. We need some preachers with some power. Somebody say amen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Ooh. Ooh. Felt good, I tell you. For a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Somebody said I was a modern day John the Baptist. Well, I, I there's no other, no man born of woman greater than John the Baptist. I can tell you that right now. I'm just a little country preacher from the cornfields of Indiana. But I am a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. I'm telling you, every crooked road's going to be straightened out and every rough place smoothed out and every mountain will be brought down low and every valley shall be exalted. My God said that he would supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Folks, don't be afraid of these end time apocalyptic signs. Don't be scared. This ain't a time to bail out on God. This is a time to grab a hold of the horns of the altar of God and press on and hold on and pray through and have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Do you guys want me to preach this? If you're an angry atheist right now, why don't you push the button because you hate me or fall on your knees and get saved. You might say, Paul, you're nuts. Say what you want to. Here's the Bible. And when you sh therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet Stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. To the man that wrote me, I'm going to say this to you. To the man that wrote me an email yesterday and told me to go get a 57 Magnum, put it to the back of my throat and blow my head off. Can I say something to you right now? Can I speak this to you? I forgive you. I totally forgive you. I totally ask Jesus to pour out his blood upon your soul. I ask the Holy Spirit to come visit you with a sweet anointing, with a spirit of love, to break down that calloused heart, soften you up a little bit, and show you the love of God. I don't want you to die lost. I don't want you to miss heaven. I don't. And Jesus doesn't. He went to the cross at Calvary. 
He hung there between the heavens and the earth. They drove the nails into his hands and his feet. They mocked him and they pressed upon his brow a crown of thorns that pierced into his, into his head. He had already been beaten beyond recognition. They had already pulled his beard out of his face. They had smite him with the back of their hand, smote him with a reed, strapped him to a whooping post, and 39 lashes of the cat of nine tails tore his flesh apart. And as he bore that cross up Golgotha's mountain, they kicked him and spit upon him and railed against him and like a lamb led to the slaughter he opened not his mouth and he hung there and he said I'm thirsty and so they went and got gall and vinegar and swapped it into the high sop and put it to his mouth and he said no nothing to dull pain nothing to dull the pain because the Bible said he bore our sins with glory with joy he endured the cross what are we going to endure? Can I ask this to the, this is, I'm going to speak right now to the American church. I'm speaking to the whole world, but I want to speak to the American church. The padded pew Christian in America. You have sat on the padded pew and you haven't even asked your neighbor if he's saved. You haven't got the time of day. You work with co-workers and you won't even ask them if they know Jesus. What are you going to do? When the world falls under a one world government, a new world order, Alex Jones is right. He's coming at it from a conspiracy theory standpoint. He's coming at it from a uh, dealing with the uh, Illuminati. I'm coming at it from a biblical standpoint, but these roads are going to cross. It's called the beast. It's called a one world government. It's called an antichrist going to rise and a false prophet. Are you saved? Are you saved? I mean, you cannot... Stick your head in the sand and get away from this one, folks. You can't run away and hide on this one. You, you just can't. You have to accept Jesus as your Savior. The signs are all around us. The signs are absolutely... I mean, the, what did I tell you about Japan? When it... Right after it happened, I told you, I said, Folks, Japan's done. You need to go ahead and evacuate out of there now because those six nuclear reactors are going to melt down. Now they're saying it's going to take 30 years to get rid of the radiation. The cattle's got radiation in it. The rice, the water, the soil, the air. And more earthquakes are coming. Are you saved? We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but I'm right now talking to you. Give your heart to Jesus. You say, Pastor, how can I be saved? Well, here's what the Bible says. If you'll repent of your sin, call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. See, with the heart man believes that there's righteousness, and of course that's in Jesus. And with the mouth, you make a confession unto salvation. But you have to do it by faith. You see, you're going to have to say, I am saved. You're going to have to repent, ask God. Ask God to forgive you of your sins and allow his mercy and his grace and his love to enter into your soul. Let the blood of Jesus wash over all the sin, cleansing you, setting your feet on a new solid foundation with the cornerstone being Jesus Christ. I feel somebody is reaching out. Give your heart to the Lord right now. I ask it in Jesus' name.